Hello everyone, good afternoon. Thank you very much for being here and I want to thank Dr. Sang, uh, New Hope Fertility Center and the organizing committee for putting this special presentation together. And I'm very, very happy to be here talking about artificial intelligence. I mean, I'm a clinician, I'm a doctor, I'm not a mathematician, but this has become a, a very, well, a passion for me now. And you will see why. I understand the frustration that uh, Keiichi just presented uh, when it comes to the embryo selection process. I think that we all share it. So being able to introduce alien technology, uh, that is talking alien about, talking about technology that is not uh, natural in medicine, such as mathematics, bioinformatics, uh, is, very, very uh, challenging and, again, very uh, promising, I believe. So I want to present to you with what I believe is the most revolutionary concept in embryo selection. So I want to talk to you before I make the presentation uh, about how Erika works. I want to talk to you about how we got into this uh, revolutionary concept. I want to tell you how it works, and I want to show you how it ranks embryos. So I think that for you to understand how we got to this idea, uh, it's important that you understand my daily routine, just part of my daily routine. So every time that I walk into my office, every morning for the past 10 years, I sit down with our most senior embryologist, we go through quality controls, we go through uh, discussing embryo development status, and then we start taking what I call the daily embryo challenge. This is, oh. We got to see many, many pictures. We got to select the embryos that we're going to transfer on that day. But I think that uh, it doesn't matter how much your daily routine varies from mine. I think that you all get to see images like these ones and you get to read numbers and sometimes combinations of numbers and letters depending on the classification systems that you use. But it doesn't matter how long you sit down. Unfortunately, the embryos never tell us uh, with the pictures we use, what we want. We would love to know which one is going to be the Cambridge graduate and which one is going to be a miscarriage, but we cannot tell this with current technology. Because of this, and I'm pretty sure again that you all share the same frustrations with me, this is why we have moved from day two to day three and now to day five embryo transfer. This is why we have invested so heavily in buying time-lapse machines. And this is why some of us have even introduced PGTA into our practice. And all of this is to select the one embryo with the best chance to give us a baby. All of this in a quest to have the best chance to offer our patients a reduced time to pregnancy. Unfortunately, all these technologies that I've mentioned are expensive, time-consuming, invasive, and according to recent literature, unfortunately unreliable, at least in their current formats. So what we need every morning that we sit for this embryo challenge is for a change are reliable, time-saving, non-invasive, and low-cost technology. And this is how we come uh, to develop this idea of embryo ranking. How does it work? Well, it takes the same images that we see every day. It puts them through artificial vision filters, extracts many, many features that are not identifiable by, by the naked eye or on, uh, on their current uh, or regular microscopy, and then it uses all this information to identify parameters and classify embryos according to their ploidy and implantation potential. Again, I'm not a mathematician. Probably most of you are not mathematicians either. So I'm going to give you a little sample on how uh, this system works. 
You can criticize this embryo as much as you want. It's just an embryo, okay? So try and extract as many features as you can. Of course, you can tell how advanced is in development. You can tell about the inner cell mass. To a ectoderm, I'm pretty sure that Anakobo and Mr. Okimura here can get many more features. Now, I'm going to show you this same embryo through the eyes of Erika, our ranking system. And I'm pretty sure most of you have never seen an embryo like this before. This is just an artificial vision filter. Now, take your time. You're sitting down here in New York with a cup of coffee, some of you. You're not in a rush. You don't have to make quick decisions now. Try and extract as many features as you can. Now, try the same with this one. Again, this is just another filter. Currently, Eric is using 94 features to make decisions, with some of these features having up to 275 variables. Again, I don't know you, but I don't have this computing uh, power. I'm going to show you uh, a video on how it works, because I know it sounds very complicated, but Erica can do this in under 25 seconds for each embryo. So this is a real-time video. So you have the patient already, the cycle is already loaded. You just drag the picture of your embryo. You confirm some data related to the fertilization uh, time, day, when you took uh, the picture. It's not time, time lapse, but we know that this could be relevant. Then you select another embryo. You do pretty much the same. And you ask Erika to run your embryos. So this is patient number one. This is video real time, okay? So you select another patient. As you can see, our mathematicians are fanatics of Game of Thrones. So you have the second patient. And you do exactly the same. You edit. You take the picture from whichever file you're using to save the picture. You all have different ways to identify your embryos. So that's why the ID is open. You check on date time of fertilization again, picture. You do the same for the next embryo. And then you ask to rank. Now, you ask for, for testing. OK, can you just stop and show the next video? Sorry, the, uh, the third example was uh, for PGTA results. So now you have the ranking. Is this fast? How do you rank? Remember, right now, and my hope is that this will change, this algorithm is not improving the embryos. It doesn't make a huge difference if you have a patient which is 45 and he's going through egg donation, or if it's 44 and only got three uh, embryos. It's the same patient. And what we want to do is to rank patients, uh, sorry, the embryos for that specific patient, for that cycle. So your embryologists have the chance to select the best embryo every time, every day. As Anna was telling, it's very important to make this standard. That's the only way that we can uh, move forward. Whenever we get to see publications today and you, and you read about hatching embryos, hatched embryos, I mean, do we really talk about the same? Are the same, is it the same to have a hatching embryo who, which is only 20% hatched or 80% hatched? The only way in which we can move this forward is by standardizing our practices. And this is the main idea of artificial intelligence. Now, this is another embryo. I would ask you the same question. How many features can you see? For you to have an idea how complicated this could become and how easy Erika is making this, just to assess 
for the degree of hatching. Our computer uses over 25 million trainable parameters just to identify the current hatching status. And I want to repeat, over 25 million, million trainable parameters. Why, why am I underlining this word of trainable? Because it's pretty much the, the same way that we were trained. When, again, I'm a doctor. When I was performing surgery, first time I saw a hysterectomy, I thought that I was never going to be, ba be able to do it. Then I was challenging myself to doing this better in a shorter time. And then laparoscopic su surgery was introduced in a new challenge. So this Erika has a huge challenge ahead. And we have to make it better. Question, how good is it now? We have just submitted, and I'm talking this morning, uh, a paper that hopefully will be accepted for publication where we actually challenge Erika and we compare it against two of our most senior embryologists and chance, just to see how good Erika is at predicting EU ploidy. And I know that uh, KG just reached a different conclusion. This is chance. These are embryologists, and believe me, they are very good embryologists. And this is Erika. Erika accurately predicted 80% of a new ploid embryos. I know it's not 100, okay? But not even trophoectoderm biopsy gives you 100. So we're getting there. We have to keep training Erika. So what is this ranking system? It's an accurate ranking system, and it can become better again. It is flexible. We don't need time lapse. Whichever microscopes, whichever objectives you're using to image to take pictures of your embryos, this is what artificial intelligence is, for, is about. It can be trained to understand your specific labs, your microscopes, and your instrumentation. Again, it's flexible. You don't have to download a software. It's everything cloud-based. And what is critical for me is not only what he's doing now. Think about a 360 non-invasive embryo assessment. Imagine when we start using non-invasive chromosome screening, like the NICS that currently New Hope is, is using. And if we add this to our image system, how much can we become in the future? What's the next step? Let's think about eggs. Eggs probably are a step-limiting uh, process in the IVF uh, treatments. We were just discussing about how to rejuvenate eggs, uh, sorry, uh, ovaries. But what if tomorrow we get as many eggs as we want uh, through IPs, IP uh, cells, through fat tissue cells? Then we're not going to have a problem in selecting, uh, so in getting eggs. The problem is going to be, the challenge is going to become which embryo we're going to transfer, because we might get many, many more than we're ever going to transfer. The challenge is going to be to select the best eggs to be injected, and this needs to be done through artificial intelligence. And again, Erika can get smarter. It needs training. And this is why I asked John and the organizers to allow me to present today. I want you to help us in join in our effort to train Erika. We need more information. We need more images. So please get in touch with me. Let's work together. And let's make move fast forward in benefit of our patients. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you very much for the presentation. And if there's any questions from the floor. Can I start to ask you a question? Thank you so much. No mathematics, very, please. Very, very nice. Uh, just uh, from a technical standpoint, when you say you can take uh, the picture of the embryo and then you can load it in the, in the app, but uh, do you need to 
does the embryologist need to take different planes? Uh, uh, is, is it going to be any, any, because if you just take one shot, you only look at one plane. You can say, you can say well, I have 75,000 or whatever additional parameters, but it is only one plane. You don't look at, uh, and the embryo is a sphere. So whatever you are looking, it's, it's not the entire story. Yes. Currently, we're working in 3D reconstruction, actually. Uh, since one of our main goals is to try and achieve time-efficient uh, process, we're trying to reconstruct uh, embryos based on 2D images and also short videos. The thing is that uh, even though it's the next step for us, videos and taking images at different, uh, like so yeah, the tomography, uh, it's time consuming. And probably if you ask me, I mean, we're in between two clinics in Mexico, probably we have about 800 cycles a year. But you, if you ask uh, here in New York, the New Hope's uh, lab to take a short video, they're going to kill me yeah. because they don't have the time. So yes, that should be the way forward probably, but it's not there yet.